Yep. Emma Watson just couldn't stay away from that magic car. <laughs> yeah, man. But it was a good movie. I, I really enjoyed it. I took my daughter to go see it. And she enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so. Um, 300 million, man. This movie made $300 million this first weekend. I don't even think Logan did that. But, um, if you got kids, um, who are watching this video, I suggest that you change it because this is not coming from a cutie woody perspective. This is coming straight from a realistic perspective. Uh, my perspective. But, um, if any of you have seen the video that I did concerning Emma Watson and her uh, Vanity Fair uh, cover uh, controversy, uh, go watch that. I'm, um, I'm putting the description box in at the end of this video in case you just want to watch me or in case you just want to listen to me talk all the way through. But uh, this video might be a little might be a little long. Um, but. I believe that the whole 300 million and as good as it's still doing um, that it really has something to do with that I think I'm calling it a publicity stunt I think that it was a publicity stunt and like I said um, well I think I said this in a uh, Facebook comment um, that um, Feminism is what rules the the um, the movie industry or any industry. For matter of fact, feminism, in my opinion, rules the world, rules the outcome of any um, any uh, set destiny or any kind of set accomplishment. Any any accomplishment that someone tries to set, feminism is the uh, is the dominant ruler of that. But the the first question that I have to ask is does uh does this movie represent uh misogyny? Does the movie itself represent misogyny or does it give the cure for misogyny? And I'ma try to uh, uh maneuver my way through this um through this review to try and come to the conclusion or to the answer to that question. So the very first thing I want to go back to that Vanity Fair cover. If this movie um, represents a form, represents society in any form. If this if this movie represents society in any form. Um, it would be first and foremost on the Vanity Fair's part for how they chose to um, and what they chose uh, for Emma Watson to wear so a lot of men that went into this movie probably didn't go into this movie to uh, get the experience or, or even if they did, let's say that they did, let's say that they did go into this movie to get the experience. Uh, they still didn't view Emma Watson the same as if um, Emma Watson would have uh, wouldn't have not done the Vanity Fair cover. So this created, uh, let's say that um, if feminists, if their view of men being misogynistic. If their view of men being mis misogynistic consists of their thoughts towards women, Vanity Fair up the ante for that. They were the cause for these men to have quote unquote misogynistic thoughts uh, towards um, towards Emma Watson and the cover that she did. So getting to the movie, uh, the very first thing that I noticed was um was when the uh when the narrator was saying was saying that he he decided to fill his castle up with the most beautiful thing as soon as take notice of this if you haven't seen it as soon as he said fill his 
feel his castle with the most beautiful things, they made it a point to put a black woman in that scene. Um, and I thought that the the very first thought, because I didn't know what the movie consisted of or what, what was going to be in the movie, um, I thought that uh, that they did this um, intentionally or with the purpose of making it a point. But um, I guess it was, um, I guess that it was all right, you know, at the at the time, you know, but as the movie went on, you can see that they that they had more and more black people, more and more black people in uh, almost every scene um, when the movie came on. You know, uh, and then there was this whole singing part, you know, where um, Belle, played by Emma Watson, was uh, was walking through and singing, and she uh, brought her book back to the librarian. The librarian was black, you know. So I think as as far as the um, you know trying to put diversity. Uh, trying to make the movie diverse as they could. They did do a good job at that. I can't um I can't complain about the um the level of um or you know the point that they tried to make. You know, it was um it was kinda heartfelt. Not dwelling on that too much. Um there was a part where the um where the um where the narrator had said um, who could ever love a beast? Um, that that stuck out to me, you know, for, from a um, from a, a philosophical point of view. I, I view everything uh, based on philosophy. Um, so, in case you uh, decided to watch this movie, watch uh, this <laughs> this video. I'm sorry. If you decide to watch this video and get some deep uh, metaphysical uh, breakdown, then I apologize. That's not where you will find it. You wouldn't find it here, especially on my channel. My channel doesn't um, doesn't subscribe to metaphysics. Um, uh, you won't catch me talking about metaphysics here on this channel. This channel is strictly philosophy, you know, and um, trying to trying to get people to think, you know, a little bit outside the box, not see what the what things what things um uh, not see things for what they are, but take it and try to convert it into what it what you want it to mean. Okay. But again I ask the question Who could ever love a beast? The reason that this question was so deep to me is because it's not, it's not a, it's not a matter of who could, who could love the, um, the ugliness. It's a, it's a matter of, are you able to, are you able to, um, show mercy? Are you able to, um, lend out a helping hand? To that which is not like you, that which is abnormal, that which is um, uh, despised, that which is looked down on, you know, because there's a, there's a scene where uh, Belle, she goes to her uh, father and um, when she comes back home and in the midst of coming back home, she starts a conversation with her father and she asks her father. She asks her father, do you think that I am odd? Now, uh, now those of you who follow me know what I'm about to do. Uh, I have to give you the definition. Now, the definition for this word odd says uh, different to what is usual or unexpected. Strange. Um... Having one left over as a remain no 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 happening or occurring infrequently and irregularly separated from a usual pair or set and therefore out of place or mismatched. So 
her and the beast, which is the point that I'm getting to. Her and the beast were the same in different aspects of life. Okay. In his aspect of life, he was the exterior of odd. She herself was the interior of odd. Okay. She was a beast, so to speak, inwardly. He was a beast outwardly. He was odd looking. Okay. He was odd on the outside. And she was odd on the inside. So, um, what we get here, the, the, because everyone knows the outcome of the, um, uh, of this movie, whether you watched it as a kid or you watched it, you know, um, this year. But their union, uh, represents. Um, the very union that we ourselves have with our significant others, whether it be man and woman or woman and woman. Okay? Um, whatever you see um, in someone, if you see their oddness, does their oddness match your oddness? Does their oddness, would their oddness enhance your oddness? Or with their beast in hands, your beast. You see, with my wife, um, I had a, a little, a little very timid, quiet beast inside of me. But it was my wife who awakened that beast. My wife could, you know, she could get things done. You know, where, where me myself, I would, I would get walked over. You know. Um, so to speak, but um, she brought me out of my cage, and and in return, I brought her um out of her cage. But that's how relationships work, okay. And um, and that's what I really love about this movie coming coming from a philosophical point of view. Um, but you know, now there was a, now there was a part where, um, where the candlestick had told, um, Bell, um, or asked Bell to forgive them for their, um, what was the word? I want to use the exact word that, uh, that he used. Um, let's see. Yes, he said, forgive us for our first impression. Okay. Um, and, 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 you know, again, coming from a philosophical point of view, this movie is solely based on a, uh, don't judge someone based on their appearance. And that's something that we all have to, um, you know, really look in depth and do uh, some some real soul searching to get the overstanding of not judging something or someone based on the first first impression. Don't judge a book by its cover. Okay, we, we we learned this. We learned this as kids, but we're never really taught. We're never really taught what it truly means. And for me myself. I don't judge anyway. I mean, just look at the um, my default picture. You know, anyone who knows who Doctor Malachi Z York is would would say that it's an abomination for you to have that picture as your default avatar picture. But I don't judge based on appearance and I don't judge based on what I hear. And I I base everything off of philosophy. And I do I I don't know this man personally, not to not to veer from the subject. But when it comes to any any teacher, 
I only get what is right for me. And I philosophize that which I learn. Because not everything everything that a person teaches is not 100% accurate. No one. But does what they teach work for you? Okay. Um, and the same here in this um, in this story. Okay. You can see how the beast brought a beast out of Baal. And how Baal herself brought humility to the beast. Okay. There was a transfer of... Um, There was a transfer of spiritual character. Okay. And that's what life is all about. Life is all about your spiritual character. Now, there are a lot of people who are, uh, who have one foot on the land and one foot in the ocean. Um, me, they're, they're earthbound, yet they're spiritual. But, um, some of them, some of them just have their toe in the ocean. You know, and, and their entire body still on the land, you know, um, and it's not it's not their fault. A lot of people are just hard the way that they are because life made them that way. And that's what you see in this movie. There's two there's two things that I want to get to right right quick. The mirror um the mirror and the song about the antlers um for the um for the for the video concerning um mirrors which is scrying i'm going to leave a video um at the end of this video by um by sister Lolita um uh, and concerning the antlers I'm going to leave the video for from from sister TT at the female sex and they get they get um they not too in depth but they give you enough to make you start thinking okay um so yeah about and about the mirror you know, well, I'm not going to get into that. Go go and check out Lolita. Um, that video is going to be at the end of this video. Um, and check out TT's video concerning the antlers. And the antlers was a... Um, was also in the movie Get Out. You know, so uh, check it out whenever you get a chance to. Um, anyone who follows me knows um, that I'm doing a video concerning um, Stockholm Syndrome and Cognitive Dissonance. Um, there's also a video uploaded concerning drape, uh, Drapetomania, uh, which I have not made public just yet. Um, but the question that I have here is, does... Does Bell, played by Emma Watson, develop Stockholm Syndrome? Um, now, my take on her developing Stockholm Syndrome is that she did not. Because she was... Um, the beast had changed. Okay, the beast was no longer a um, a um, he he was no longer a person with bad intentions. His intentions were now good, and he wanted to um, he wanted to make an impression on Bell. You know, yes, to make him free, of course, but at the same time, you know, he didn't want this to just to be someone that he, you know. Uh, he didn't want this to be someone that he just met and they uh, and they decided not to love him anymore. He wanted to make sure that this was the one and he wanted to be the one for her. 
Now, um, if anyone knows what Stockholm Syndrome is, you know, um, and I'm going to leave a video in the description box for uh, Brother Tariq Nasheed. Um, I also uploaded this video um, to my uh, to my channel where Brother Tariq Nasheed explains Stockholm Syndrome um, and its origins. And based on his his description, his analysis and his his research on Stockholm Syndrome, I do not see that in this character. Now, uh, based on the research, it was a situation like this where women developed Stockholm Syndrome for their captors. But, uh, but as far as Bell, I don't, um, I don't think so. Now the, uh, the last, um, I want to say last 20, 30 minutes of the movie, uh, whenever this part is, I, I want to say it's the last 20 minutes of the movie where, um, where Bell comes back to save her dad, um, uh, Now, the whole purpose of her save, trying to save her dad um, was because the the people in the town didn't believe that he saw a beast and they were going to admit him into a psychiatric hospital. She came and she showed the people that the beast was real. Now, me as a person in that crowd It, that's really all the proof that I needed was to see that the beast was real. Why would I now listen to some asshole? Uh, I don't. I I can't remember what it was that he said, but what if whatever he said after everyone had saw that the beast was real should have been null and void. You know so. That's that whole scene uh, really didn't work for me because in my mind I was like, how stupid are these people? Are, the whole reason that y'all was angry and and um, trying to send this guy to a um, to a psychiatric hospital because you thought he was lying. Now that the truth was told, you still trying to? Nah, it makes no sense and. <laughs> why is the people's beef now with the with the beast? Why are they beefing with the beast now? Beef beast. Why are they beefing with the beast now? You see what I'm saying? Why are they trying to kill the beast? They know that the beast is real. Uh, Belle's still alive. Matter of fact, she's dressed up. Not a scratch on her. And y'all still trying to kill the beast. That just didn't make any sense to me. But, you know, every movie needs that dramatic uh well i'm they had to get the people there okay that's that's why they did that they had to get the people there because a lot of those people knew the dishes and the um all of the souls that were locked inside the house um items okay so that you know it was it was understandable now that i think about it okay so i got these that I want to uh, that I want to go over, and it's the movie in uh, it's the movie overall. Everything that I talked about overall. Um, when she asked her father, "Was she odd?" Uh, because everyone viewed her as different, and she came to love the beast and his oddness and his difference. Um, I didn't finish this note, but I spoke on this earlier. That both of their oddness, both of their beasts, um, where where he was more ugly um, externally, she was ugly inwardly. Now, for a lot of those people who ask the question, um, why did they have to get to um, to a, a handsome and a beautiful woman to play these parts and not someone who was hideous and ugly to play these parts like okay 
you would get um uh, um a Beyonce over a um uh ain't nobody got time for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh these that their their beauty, so to speak, is supposed to be a representation of the beauty that we feel when we are in a relationship with someone that brings out our better self. Okay. Um could she have ever fell in love with the beast if it were not for the spirit possessed items. Okay, now the spirit possessed items had to uh make for they had to make up for allowing the beast to become what he did. There's a scene in the movie where the uh, Mrs. Teapot, I only remember her because my daughter picked the teapot over Belle. Okay. Um, toys. <laughs> okay. Uh, but Mrs. Teapot told Belle. Belle asked him the question, why would you all serve someone like this? And Mrs. Teapot explained to her that he was not always like that. His father, when there, when his, when, when his wife and the beast's mother had passed away, um, the father made the beast into that person. Okay, the person he was before he turned into the beast. The whole reason he became the beast in the first place, that person. Okay, um, the the um, the spirit possessed items stood by and let the father do it when they could have spoken up for him, for, you know, uh, the beast or for him when he was a boy. Okay. They allowed the father to turn the son into a beast in nature instead of the beast on the outside. Okay. So, uh, that was the purpose of the spirit possessed items. Uh, they had to play their part. They had to play the role um, of um, of helping the beast to fall in love with Belle or to help Belle fall in love with the beast because it was something that was already there. Now, it had to take place during the time, you know, the time period where a lot of people just weren't, um, um, I guess you would say, um, compatible. Um, during this time period, people weren't just com- compatible like the Beast and Bell were, as you saw with uh, Gastov or Gaston. I believe that's that was his name. Um, he he was he was he was supposedly handsome. OK, uh, but he was a beast on the inside. Okay, he was the misogyny in the movie. Okay, he uh, well, I wouldn't call it misogyny, uh, because you know what you have to see the movie. I don't want to give that part away, uh, but um, he was his heart was hard, and he he only viewed Bill as a servant or someone that would be his servant you know um you know sex whenever i wanted uh food on my table when when i'm hungry and you know that type of deal now i wouldn't call that misogynistic that was just the mind of the person of the people at that time people during this day and age refer that to misogyny okay but you know it is what it is um Would now my question is: Would she have ever fallen in love with the beast if he wasn't a prince? Okay. Now that I can't answer that question, you know, uh, y'all just tell me what you think in the comments. Um, is Belle love for the beast a result of Stockholm syndrome? Like I said earlier, um, Tariq Nasheed did a video concerning. Uh, Stockholm Syndrome, its origins, and what it is, what it is in its origins. And based on his analysis and his research on Stockholm Syndrome, I cannot come to the conclusion that Bill has suffered from Stockholm Syndrome. 
Um, let's see. I didn't see any misogyny on the beast's part. Um, when it came to how he, um, how he treated, how he treated uh, Belle when she was his prisoner. Um, his anger was a result of the rose petals falling off the rose and him not falling, uh, finding someone to fall in love with someone to that, that who could love him for him, you know, and seeing this girl, he had came to the conclusion that no one would ever love me in this condition. So it was more like he was just waiting out his days. Okay. And he just needed his anger concerning the inevitable end, so to speak. Um, he would just want to lash that anger out on someone. And that's, that's any of us. That's any of us, especially someone who's weak in the mind. Okay. Um, a lot of people who are weak in their mind, they, um, they, um, they tend to not hold on to hope, so to speak, that if you're diagnosed with a, a, a terminal illness that that gives you only X amount of time to live, you would become angry. You, it, it would be the sadness as a result of sadness, you know, that you want to live and you want to experience life, you know. So that's why the beast was upset. He wasn't just, it wasn't just for no reason. Okay. And that's not something that we should be throwing around. You know, that just because someone's angry, they're angry for no reason. Everyone has a root to their anger. Everyone has a root to why they do the things that they do. Keep in mind, this movie is not just about what you see on the surface. The beast could also represent, uh, let's say, murder. Someone who killed someone. You know, um, you don't know what the situation was in order for them to kill that person. Okay. Um, let's say um, a, a, a mother, okay, who drowns her kids. There's a root to that. Now, I'm in I'm in no position to make an excuse for these people because I don't know. All I do know is, is that there is a root to the things that people do. And we have to get to the root of that cause before we just um, say that the person is mentally ill. Before we say that the person is was full of hate. Um, and even if they were full of hate, how did the hate get there? Everything has a root. We have to stop dealing with the surface of things. We always deal with the surface. We always deal with what we see. The person on the job who's an asshole, who we view as a dick. What's causing that person to be a dick? And are you willing to help that person in, in whatever it is that's causing them to be that way? If you're not willing to help that person out of their misery, you have no reason to talk about that person. That's something that I'm learning. Okay. You know, but. You know, this movie overall, uh, it was it was actually no different than the cartoon. The only thing that was different about this movie um, was the graphics a few um a f just a few minor details in the movie but um overall um uh, i would suggest that you all see this movie in 3d or xd if you have not seen it yet um me and my daughter made the mistake of watching it in the regular theater but i suggest that you go spend that money get your money's worth it it will be worth it Okay, um, but yeah, um, tell me what you guys think. Um, this is the second movie review that I've done. 
So, um, yeah, just let me know what you guys think and uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, you know, check out some of the other content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.